It's the new year and it's swipe time. Here's what we've got for you in the next 10 minutes. We head to Las Vegas to take in the weird and wonderful at the world's biggest gadget show. You've heard of drone racing. Now we bring you drone gaming with lasers. And one of the biggest franchises in video games is back. We've got Resident Evil 7 Biohazard in our review. Hello and welcome to your very first swipe of 2017. Before we talk about laser battle drones, we're going to kick off in Vegas at the biggest tech trade show of the year. Greg has been at CES for us. It's hard to believe, but they've been doing this now for 50 years, and you wonder what the tech fan of 1967 would make of what's on display in 2017. CES this year is dominated by virtual and augmented reality, by robotics, by those home voice-activated assistants, and by merging the smart worlds of the two places we spend most time. Toyota is just one of the companies here unveiling concept cars and all of them have much greater connectivity and Toyota is very proud of the fact that this one has artificial intelligence uh, as well. The gap between the home and the car is closing and you look at Ford's tie up with Amazon where you can speak to your Alexa at home while sitting in the car. It makes your connected home and your connected car, well, connected. The industry says all of this makes cars better and crucially safer as well and they say this technology is coming soon. The challenges of self-driving cars are much greater, Toyota says, but they are coming eventually. Now, it seems for years at CES they've been talking about OLED TVs, and this year is no different, but this is the extraordinary introduction this year from LG, what they call their wallpaper, and you can see why it's so extraordinary if I hold my phone up against it, just its depth, less than a tenth of an inch, the depth of this screen, it just hangs on the wall, no frame and they say a completely immersive experience. But if OLED TVs are a staple here, something that is big this year are things like this, these voice-activated robots, these things that will make our homes more connectable with a little almost human face there. They are everywhere here, along with ways to make you feel what you're seeing through your virtual reality headset. And for all the gadgets that grab the headlines, CES is about the evolutionary process of all of these things. Some of them we'll never get our hands on, but many we will, and many very soon. That's what we'll be looking at in just a moment, the quadcopters that let you battle your friends with lasers. But this week has really been all about CES. So what else has been going on there? Well, aside from all those cars and voice-controlled home hubs, the wearables have been getting plenty of attention at the world's biggest gadget show, Ever fancied a pair of jeans that can direct you to your destination? No, I haven't either, but should you ever, these might be a good fit, excuse the pun. They're linked to your phone and buzz to tell you which way to turn. There's also a bodysuit that claims to monitor breathing, perspiration and temperature. And some speakers that hang around your neck, because who wants headphones anymore, right? You might not wear this one, but you'll be keeping it pretty close. An internet-connected walking stick that can alert a carer if you have a fall. Now let's not forget about pet tech. Here's a dog collar that claims to track behaviour and tell you when your pooch isn't feeling well. Also amongst the offerings of things you didn't even know you needed, an internet-connected hairbrush. Built with sensors and a microphone, it can apparently listen to your hair, letting you monitor the effects of different hair care routines. Of course... Stick around for our games review in just a few minutes. We've got the long-awaited and pretty dark Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. But before that... There's been a lot of talk around Star Wars in recent weeks. The new movie Rogue One became a box office hit. And then we had the sad news that Carrie Fisher had died. Like a lot of major franchises, Star Wars has always gone big on its merchandising. And its new toy is apparently going to make drone gaming the next big thing. Well, that's what the makers tell me anyway. There's so many uses for drones, as you see with delivery and uh, inspection of uh, agriculture and things like that. Um, but then you have the lifestyle application of drones. You've seen um, recently drone racing has become uh, extremely popular and it's just moving very quickly. Um, adding lasers to the drones, it just creates a whole new dimension. It's a new element. It means that we can actually interact. We can battle. Okay, so come on, are you going to play too? I'm going to play. Come on then. <laughs> I'm flying solo here, I need someone to shoot at. 
I can shoot you, my drone can recognize that it's been shot, and it can just, it creates a level of gaming to the product. How much are these drones each? Special collectors in box, uh, they're 200 pounds in the UK. 200 and, pounds? Yes. Woo! With lasers encoded with data that you can transfer from one ship to another, I think it sets off a whole new era of the drone industry. 200 pounds seems pretty expensive for a toy. Well, it's not, it's not really a toy. Uh, the product is a, is a high-tech item. Well, you got it, you got it. <laughs> there we go, there we go. I got it, I got it, I got it. Which of the big tech companies' experiments with drones is interesting you the most right now? Well, it's pretty impressive what Amazon is trying to do with drones, how they're using them uh, to efficiently deliver packaging at a much, or products at a much uh, faster rate. But I'm also very fascinated by a company out of Germany called Festo Robotics um, that is incorporating animal movement into, into drones. Going back to commercial drones, what do you think about the hacking risk? Yeah, there's not much you can do when you hack somebody's drone. It, it, it can't do very much. Um, it can just be flown to a different destination. So I don't think that's a major issue. What if it was a drone taxi that was hacked and you're the passenger? I think that's, I think that's years away before we, see, before we see drone taxis. Oh, 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 we nearly got our cameraman, Martin, there. Oh, oh. You want to turn the nose? Oh, sorry. Sorry. I'm going to wreck one of these. Now time for this week's games review. The first of 2017. And seeing as we've got a bit of a theme going on here, guess which game we're going to start with. Here's Ross. 2017 is said to be another huge year for video games, and 2016 saw some big games as well released. One of which, which was Star Wars Battlefront, it came out actually over 12 months ago, but has had DLC, which is downloadable content, released for it over the last 12 months. And the most recent one came out in line with the brand new Star Wars film Rogue One. This new DLC is set around that and comes with a brand new game mode called Infiltration Mode, which sees you start in space around the planet and end up on the planet in the jungles and beaches of Scarif. It is an amazing new add-on to the game. So if you've got Star Wars Battlefront, you had the season pass, you'd have got this free. If you didn't, you can buy it all on its own just so you can experience Rogue One. Plus, there is a brand new free add-on on the PS4, which sees a VR mission. Yes, if you've got the PlayStation VR headset, you can now pilot an X-Wing. Again, in the Rogue One setting, it is one of the most amazing experiences that I've actually had in VR. So if you've always had a dream of flying an X-Wing, this is your opportunity. So Star Wars Battlefront Rogue One is out now. January sees the release of one of the biggest gaming franchises with the next installment from Resident Evil. This being Resident Evil 7 Biohazard. Brand new game, loads of new features, but also going back to the roots of some of the original games. So this time you're going to be playing in first person mode as a character named Ethan, who is a civilian, which is very different to the normal characters that you've seen in previous Resident Evil 7 games. You find yourself searching for your wife and you end up in this mansion which again is quite similar to many other Resident Evil games, but this time being in first person mode, it definitely ups the scare factor. If you're looking for a classic game, horror based, but also first person shooter and gonna give you a huge amount of playable appeal, Resident Evil 7 Biohazard is definitely the one you should pick up in January. Call of Duty Infinite Warfare got off to a bit of a rocky start on its launch in 2016, but it also still made it to Christmas number one. And its first DLC launches exclusively on PlayStation 4 on the 31st of January. The DLC is entitled Sabotage, but the Zombies takes you to the next level. So after the first part in Zombies in Spaceland, which came with the original part of the game, this is now Rave in the Redwood. It looks like it's gonna be linked to a previous map from a previous Call of Duty, which is again quite horror based. So it looks like the characters are gonna have a whole load of huge more fun with Zombies. And again, the four new DLC maps also offer a great way of getting the multiplayer action with all the game modes into new levels and new experience to try and master. That's it for this week, but in case you didn't know, you can watch any of our Swipe episodes on demand in all the usual places. And follow us on Twitter, at Sky News Swipe, to see what we get up to throughout the week. Join us again next time. Bye-bye.